My name is Julian Napoleon. I'm a member of the Soto First Nations up in Treaty 8, a community that stands to be directly impacted by the Site C Dam. I'm also an applied biology student uh, studying sustainable agriculture and food systems. I'm a farmer at the UBC farm, so uh, this issue is really important to me. I was just going to share a little bit of information, a little background information on the Site C Dam. From an agricultural perspective, uh, there's a rating system in place and uh, class one agricultural land is the highest quality of farmland um, and that's based not only on, science, uh, on the soil but also on the, the climate. In BC, the Fraser Valley is the largest continuous tract of class one agricultural land uh, but then the next largest continuous tract of class one agricultural land is the Peace River Valley. So what we have here is just a huge area of the best quality farmland uh, that you could have. Over the last few years with glo uh, global warming and these increasing, increasingly severe drought cycles in California, but also here in the Fraser Valley where our watersheds have a very limited water holding capacity, we've been looking at huge water restrictions. And up in the Peace River Valley, uh, they sit on just a massive, massive aquifer of, of fresh clean water so as we go forward the value of that valley for ensuring food security for everyone is just immeasurable there's no dollar value that you could place upon it uh, Wendy Holm who's one of the most well-respected uh, professional agrologists in the province determined that the valley could feed a million people in perpetuity which to me uh, to put that at risk or to to destroy that forever is just complete idiocy. So besides the agricultural value um, for us as Danesa people and, and Treaty 8, our oral history and our culture and identity is so intimately tied to that valley. When you look at the stories uh, of our people they do spread out beyond that valley, but they always come back to the Peace River. And uh, so for us, it's just a very important and a sacred, sacred place. And uh, we have so much to lose. The Peace River Valley right now, the islands and the river are the really well used moose calving grounds. The cow mooses swim there because they're protected from predators or disturbance and they calf there in the spring. So that's a really important place for the moose as well. That are such an, uh, we have such an important relationship with the moose. Um, they really provide the mainstay of our diet and uh, they're just it's a key component of our culture and we have so, so much respect for them. So uh, to, to take away their calving grounds is an atrocity. Another thing is our, our fisheries. The previous two dams that have already been built, they released methylmercury into the water from the Cambrian layer of the trees that were mulched to make way for the flooding uh, that bioaccumulated in, in the ecosystem. And uh, we can no longer eat those fish. They're poisonous. So, and as you go up above the, the, the Peace Arch Dam into Dinosaur Lake, which is the, the most recent reservoir, um, there's dangerously high levels of mercury. You could eat a small amount of that fish occasionally. And then when you go above the next dam, the Williston Dam, which was the first dam built, um, those fish are toxic. You can't eat them. So now um, that they're looking at building this third dam, it'll make another vast stretch of that of that water waterway, of the watershed, uh, have fish that are no longer safe to eat. Uh, not only for us, but other other creatures that depend on those fish. You know, we're doing what we can from every angle here, whether it's in the courts, uh, lobbying, government policy, public speaking, uh, street level activism. At times it's, it's hard to feel optimistic when you're going up against giants like crown corporations that are backed by uh, the likes of our current provincial and federal governments. They like to uh, acknowledge First Nations in rhetoric only, but never in action.